morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Jimmy James Jones, and welcome to Crypto Bible. In today's news, El Salvador has become the newest nation to consider citizenship by investment. Salvadorian President Nayib Bukele on Sunday said that he will send Congress a proposal to grant citizenship to foreigners who invest in the Central American country, another step in the populist leaders' plans to bolster the country's economy by attracting non-traditional capital. Bukele said on Twitter, I'm sending 52 legal reforms to Congress to remove red tape, reduce bureaucracy, create tax incentives, citizenships in exchange for investments, new security laws, stability, contracts, and, and etc., which means other stuff. Also, I'm assuming he would have said it in his accent. Anyway, since September, El Salvador has attracted increasing international interest when it passed a law that made the cryptocurrency Bitcoin legal tender, like the new package of El Salvador reforms that law was first proposed by Bukele. If the new citizenship legal reform is passed, El Salvador would become one of the few countries to offer a citizenship by investment program, joining several other small countries, mainly in the Caribbean, according to the world's leading government advisory and market firm, CS Global Partners. CBI programs usually require a vetted applicant to make a minimum monetary contribution to a government fund or purchase real estate in the country to obtain citizenship. Misha Emmett says, an increasing number of crypto investors and tech entrepreneurs have started looking to second citizenship as a means of achieving greater freedom. Misha Emmett being the CEO of CS Global Partners, she also added that this growing demographic has combined assets like cryptocurrency with, uh, with additional citizenships to unlock financial autonomy and wealth diversity. She said, as crypto gained more traction in the last few years, we've started seeing an increase in interest for second citizenship from the tech community. This demographic technologically is already global, so it makes sense that they want their assets to reflect this mindset. A second citizenship offers a level of safety and security that investors can rely on during political or economic turmoil. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has particularly triggered families to obtain second citizenship to better protect themselves and their financial assets while increasing their global mobility. The dual island nation of St. Kitts and Nevis has been a popular destination amongst the wealthy, uh, mainly because of its CBI program. This initiative provides a trusted route to second citizenship once an applicant invests in the nation. Uh, established in 1984, St. Kitts and Nevis program is internationally recognised as a platinum standard brand. Despite being the smallest sovereign state in the Western Hemisphere, St. Kitts and Nevis is one of the most technologically advanced nations in the region regarding its crypto-friendly approach to its banking. Um, the islands recently passed a bill uh, simplifying the trade of virtual assets and are also currently running a digital currency pilot program known as Dcash. St. Kitts and Nevis also does not impose income, uh, inheritance or capital gains tax, allowing citizens to breathe a little freer as they focus on the investments uh, that matter to them, which means this is probably something that Jimmy Carr should get himself involved in because we all, uh, we all know that he loves to dodge a tax. <laughs> Jamaica's government is also being pushed to consider adopting a citizenship by investment program with the funds gained through the process used for various development projects. Uh, Julia Dixon, CEO and broker at Jamaica's Softspeed International Realty, made the call in October 2021. She said funds gained from the project should be used to invest in the country's infrastructure, real estate, job creation and business development. Emmett commented, for a number of countries, especially in the Caribbean, there is no denying that the CBI programmes offer a much needed injection of foreign direct investment, often in a way that can make significant developmental difference. Uh, these funds are channeled into reducing international aid and debt, developing the tourism sector, job growth as foreigners often employ locals when expanding offices or constructing properties and sustainability initiatives. Dixon particularly pointed out that St. Kitts and Nevis, which pioneered the citizenship by investment programme close to four decades ago and has invested upwards up to $300 million from the programme in modernising its infrastructure, she said Jamaica could do the same. Finally, St. Kitts and Nevis offers a trusted product that has been acclaimed globally by independent studies, like the annual CBI index published by the Financial Times. 
PWM magazine. With an influx of citizenship programs on the market, St. Kitts and Nevis continues to be a powerhouse within the industry, with one of the longest standing programs in operation. Those who become citizens gain a wealth of benefits, including increased global mobility to two financial centres in Asia, Europe and Africa, alternative business prospects and the ability to pass citizenship down, thus establishing a future legacy for one's family, basically meaning you and all your kids are going to be rich. Additionally, St. Kitts and Nevis does not impose any personal income, gift or inheritance tax and has a Currency pegged in the US dollar, making it a financially lucrative destination for serving investors. And now I'm thinking I might have to take that trip to St. Kitts and Nevis, my damn self. This country CBI's unit, which processes all economic citizenship applications, usually issues approvals or denials within the period of three months. There are no interviews, language, education or business requirements. Yeah, seriously, I think I might have to make a trip to St. Kitts. I might, I might have to make. I might have to make a trip. Who, who's going to make a trip to Saint Nick's with me? I think we need to go to Saint Kitts, my guys. We need to. I think we need to go to Saint Nick's. Anyway, travel to the island is not obligatory, and no minimum residence stays applies either before or after the citizenship is obtained. Due diligence pr- procedures remain among the industry's most robust, and the nation is strengthening them by focusing by focusing on enhancing fingerprinting and biometrics. In conclusion, for those looking to hedge against future risks, combining the dual island nation's crypto-friendly policies and second citizenship provides investors with the ultimate insurance policy during times of unpredictability. St. Kitts and Nevis remains the best destination for securing your future with a thriving financial service sector and a growing crypto hub. And the beaches are fantastic. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and click that notification bell on the Crypto Bible page to hear and see more from myself, Jimmy James Jones, Elroy Welsh, and Oliver.